he is talking about uh, our Rothschild's puppet, our President Obama. And Tex, uh, we have a caller on the line that has a question, so we'll go ahead and, and get get right to the caller. Um, caller, uh, please state your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Arlene. Jo- um, this is Arlene Johnson. I'm calling from England. Um, Tex, um, um, I have so much respect for you, so much admiration. Um, I hope you're getting my emails that I send to you. I know how busy you are, um, but um, I, I send things, you know, when I post a new, an announcement of a new edition of my work, and um, some of, I, I've published some of your articles because I because they're so Great. true. Thank you. Um, you know, the, today um, I read something about Timothy Gessner about his, apparently he's been arrested um, and stripped of his passport and his driver's license. Um, have you heard anything about that? And if so, would you like to comment? Is this legitimate? Um, um, because this man is sheer evil, you know. Of course, you know that. I, I don't. I don't. I don't believe he has to even show a passport, uh, honestly. Uh, but, but no, I, I mean, I was just watching the news before this program began, uh, and, you know, I, that would be very hard for me to believe. I, I, don't, I don't think that would be so. Uh, yeah. I and mean, wh- where would he go that they would arrest him? I mean, you know, we do have the new world order now, and uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to arrest anybody like that. You know, yeah. Gettner is a very powerful man, uh, yeah. and... Uh, you know, he was with uh, Alan. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I reported in my news uh, letter that he plays tennis three days a week with Alan Greenspan. He was head of the uh, New York Federal Reserve uh, Bank. Yeah. So he's been around, and he also worked for Goldman Sachs and uh, with Kissinger Associates. So these kind of yeah. people are, are immune from any kind of uh, prosecution. Yeah. Right. I I think I think what you're all you're saying is completely true. Um, I, I, I found it hard to believe. I sure, well, you know, it excites me a little bit. I sure would like to see it. Yeah, that makes like two of us. I just indicted and given a trial uh, uh, for, for their great crimes. And really they're stealing uh, of trillions of dollars from the American people. And I, I believe right now to forestall uh, a total uh, economic collapse, they have begun the process all over again of the derivatives, you know, the, the credit uh, uh, yeah. mess. And, and that's, that's what we're seeing right now. I think it's already beginning again. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I said, and, and you may, you may uh, be privy to this, but I began telling people some months ago we were in the midst of a recovery. And this was before even Obama and the others began to talk about it. You, you have to, when you're, when you're um, uh, pushing such liquidity, into the stock market and the economic system, uh, as they've done. Uh, I mean, they, they $26.4 trillion, according to, to Sidney Borofsky, the Congressional Inspector General, uh, $26 trillion, and as you know, uh, only what, around $700 billion was approved in the TARP. There were two TARPs, but both of them together were not for more than, what, one in $1.4 trillion or so. So, so they've spent way, way more money building up the banks. Now, the banks are not lending it to people, but instead they're buying treasury bills, uh, and that drives the dollar down. So they're destroying the dollar is what they're doing. Uh, but as far as the banks go, they're plush right now. They're, they're plush. Uh, and most of the money has been going to keep China going. China is in a terrific bubble situation. Uh, if you study it very quickly, you find, or very uh, carefully, you find that Red China now uh, is 100% in debt. I mean, they actually have no money. They have run out of money in China, uh, and to keep their economy uh, uh, afloat, and they claim their, their GDP, their gross domestic product, went up 19% in the most recent quarter in China, uh, and ours is just puny compared to that. But Red China is in a big bubble right now, and they're building and they're ordering aluminum and steel and lumber, and they're building new buildings. And uh, the whole thing, China is just going crazy on their economy. But they're getting all this money from the United States. It's all being um, uh, stuffed in their pockets over there. So it, 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 the whole 
whole thing is a terrific scandal. By the way, the one, one of the reasons Bernanke, when asked by Congress or the Congressional Committee, which, which banks and which banks of any overseas had gotten money from the government and from the Fed, he said he couldn't remember. Well, he should have had those no. facts in his fingertips. But, it, but in fact, you will find that banks in Belgium and Italy and France and Germany and Japan and Indonesia and in China have received trillions of dollars of American monies. So well, we're Arlene, up uh, thank you very much for calling. Uh, we uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Tex, but we, we no need problem. to move on. Uh, thank you. Anyway, thank you, Arlene. Yeah, Tex, just look for my emails. It's our, it's Arlene Johnson. Cause I just, oh, Arlene, I do. I, I know your name, and I read your emails. Thank you very much for them. Bless you. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, it, it, before you go on, uh, Henry, I do want to say, listeners, you can get Tex's um, CD about the subject that we're talking about. And, Tex, maybe you can tell them how to go ahead and get that, and then I know Henry has questions for you. Sure. Uh, uh, folks can go to powerofprophecy.com, powerofprophecy.com, and they can see a free trailer, you know, sort of a summation of the whole video, three or four minutes long. And, you know, you want to pay for that at all. And it'll sort of tell you what the video is all about. But just click onto it right on the home page, powerofprophecy.com. And you can read the other articles. By the way, I have a terrific article called Swindler's List. And it actually lists all of the Obamas, uh, of Obama's Zionist Jews in power from Rahm Emanuel. And guess what? Even Michelle Obama. Did you know the black woman who was her chief of staff, the first lady, was fired? That Desiree? A, yeah, huh? Which one are we talking about, Desiree? No, now Desiree was just the appointments okay. person. Uh, but the, the, there was one that was called the chief of staff. She sort of runs everything for the first lady. Uh, she was replaced. The African-American was replaced with a woman named Susan Sher, S-H-E-R, a Jewish woman, because they want to make sure that Michelle Obama doesn't say or do anything that is not approved. Uh, and, of course, uh, Obama himself, in, in the White House, you have Timothy Gettner, the Secretary of the Treasury, Ben Bernanke, the Chairman of the Federal Reserve. They're not in the White House, but they're his top advisors. Rahm Emanuel is only 30 feet from him, the White House Chief of Staff. And, of course, as you, you know, Henry, you and Johnny, uh, Rahm Emanuel is actually a citizen uh, of Israel. Oh, and, he, yeah. Yeah, and, he, and he served in the Israeli Defense Forces. He refused to serve in America. Uh, well, he's a ballet dancer too. Don't forget that part. Yeah, I think he's more, but I, than, than just a ballet dancer. I'm not going to tell you anymore, but I think you understand <laughs> what I'm saying. Uh, Larry Summers is the uh, the head of the financial uh, the, uh, section there in the White House. Uh, also, right down the hall from uh, Barack Obama is David Axelrod, his chief political advisor, who was also his campaign manager. His director of the Office of Management Budget is Peter Artsag. And all of these people, every one of them are Jews. But listen, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about the Centers for Disease Control with the swine flu or the IRS or the Federal Trade Commission or the Federal Communications Commission or the FDIC or the SEC or the Small Business Administration, uh, did you, even the Food and Drug Administration. Every one of them. All of these groups are all government agencies, all led by Zionist Jews. How did that happen? If every one of these agencies, if the head of it was a Southern Baptist, they'd be held to pay. Yes. If they said everybody around Obama, I mean the FTC, the FDA, the, F, the SEC, the CDC, you know, all the alphabet agencies, they're all uh, Muslims or they're all Baptist. People would go bonkers. Or they're all Germans or they're all... Uh, Arabs. So why is it okay to have all these Israeli uh, dual citizens everywhere? And, I mean, there's almost no Gentiles and very few blacks, by the way, Mr. Holder. And I'm not sure he has any power either. So it's an incredible situation. And, by the way, they made sure that even, even Vice President Biden is watched over constantly. His chief of staff is a Jew named Ron Klain. All the, by the way, I mentioned uh, Eric Holder. He cannot take cases to the Supreme Court for the government on his own. He uses somebody called the U.S. Solicitor General. Guess who that is? Elena Kagan, a Jew. And, and 
the Securities and Exchange Commission that regulates the stock market? Yep, Jewish. How about the chairman of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission? That's the price of oil, the price of gold and silver, and all the commodities from wheat to soybeans to corn. Guess what? Gary Gensler, chairman of it. Yeah, you got it. Uh, a Zionist Jew. This is yes, not by uh, some I got a accident. question, but, but isn't Obama a Muslim? We hear he's a Muslim. No. Uh, how does that no, fit together? No, no. No, no, he, he went to a Muslim school, but that's like, you know, somebody said, I, I went to a, you know, a Scorsese, who, 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 the Hollywood director who did the hideously anti-Jesus movie, The Horrible Blasphemous of uh, the Last Temptation of Christ. Uh, he, he actually went, he, he was a Roman Catholic, raised, and then he went to, um, uh, he, he's a flunk out of a uh, seminary. He was going to be a priest. But you don't want to call him a Christian today. He's a Christian hater. Martin you, don't mean Barack. You, you don't mean Barack was going to be a priest. You mean Scorsese, right? Yeah, Martin Scorsese, who yeah. gave us the blasphemous movie, The Last yeah. Temptation of Christ. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, but Obama, Obama went for a few uh, years to a Muslim to school. King, I mean, uh, in, in reverence to him? Excuse me? Did, didn't President Obama uh, bow to the Saudi king uh, in reverence to him when he on a visit? Uh, he did the same thing to Queen Elizabeth. Uh, I think he's got some strange idea about the, the little bowing process uh, that, that according to the, uh, uh, you know, you might say the book of etiquette. I remember in the military we had a book like that for ulcers, and uh, they told us never bow to a foreign, foreign potentate. Americans don't bow. We shake hands and, and or just sort of nod our head. That's it. Well, it's uh, in the protocol things that they're not yeah, it's supposed in the, it's to bow. In the, Right, it's in the protocol, uh, and, and you know all these regulations tell you. And I'm sure the White House has protocol. So he did that. But let me just say this: he is by no means a Muslim, no means whatsoever. The closest he gets is the fact that he is a member of the Masonic Lodge, as are all black political leaders and civil rights leaders. And I show this in my video: Louis Farrakhan, black Muslim leader, he's a 33rd degree Mason. But on the other hand, Jesse Jackson, who claims to be a Christian and is not, is also a 33rd degree Mason. Even the, the blind governor, and I mean that not uh, physically, of New York, David Patterson, he's a Mason. So all of the leaders uh, uh, are, are Freemasons. And, of course, Freemasonry preaches a universal religion uh, and, and, a, and a God who really uh, is the ancient God of Egypt and Babylon, it turns out to be Lucifer in his guise as the ancient mysteries religion sun god. So this is who really the Masons worship. And uh, that would probably be the closest thing to who Obama worshiped. Now, in the Chicago Tribune newspaper and .com, on December the 12th, 2008, Chicago Tribune, Abner Mikva, one of the best-known Jewish lawyers in America, he was the White House counsel, the top lawyer, to Bill Clinton in the White House during the Lewinsky, you know, impeachment. Abner Mikva was a big supporter during the campaign. Uh, he's, he's from Chicago of Barack Obama. He's quoted as saying this, quote, Barack Obama will go down in history as America's first Jewish president. Mikva in that same article says one day Barack Obama came to visit him, a younger Barack Obama. And knowing that Barack Obama had these political ambitions, he said, Mr. Mikva, now he's going to his Jewish mentor, right? How, how can I get ahead in politics in Chicago? Give me some rules to go by. Mr. Mikva said, the first thing I said, I told Obama you must do is go and join a big, very big and, and influential African American church. You can't get ahead as a black politician unless you join a black church, a Christian church. And that's how then Obama found uh, Dr. Jeremiah, uh, whatever his name is there, right. uh, the disgrace uh, of that uh, Christ church there. So, so he only went He only went and became a member of that church. But he was a member and, 22 years. Well, yeah, but he, but he started yeah. off there uh, at, on the advice of Abner Mikva, former congressman, former federal judge, and former White House counsel. So the Jews told him, go join a black Catholic church. You need a base, a constituency. 
But I want to I want to emphasize again, Barack Obama did not represent blacks in the Illinois legislature. His district was Jews. In fact, he lived in a multi-million dollar mansion in a Jewish neighborhood, very swanky and luxurious. And he lived right across the street from a Jewish synagogue. And he lived right across the street from a Jewish synagogue. 